Hey everyone, you're here starting with Cody and Pete. And in today's video, we are talking about one of my favorite things to do, and that is playing with the red bobbin case, doing bobbin work or bobbin play. So what this does, it uses a red bobbin case on the Bernina machines, which we'll talk about using significantly thicker thread that can't go through the needle. And we could do some really fun decorative stitching with some really thick thread that really just lays nice and flat on the fabric. So let's take a closer look at how we work with this red bobbin case, um, this thick thread, and let's play with some bobbin work. And as always, if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and sit back and enjoy. So here we are. So we are working with the Bernina red bobbin case. So what's different about this red bobbin case opposed to the black bobbin case that comes with all the machines? So this bobbin case and this one are almost identical aside from the color, but this one has a tensioner in it. And so this one actually applies tension to your thread. Well, the red one doesn't have any tensioner in it. So it doesn't have any tension. It doesn't apply any tension to the thread. Um, the, te the thread traveling through the, the bobbin case applies just enough tension so it stays stable, but it doesn't have any tension. Because the reason we don't want tension is because we're working with a much thicker thread. So here, this is, um, in my opinion, some of the best thread to work with when doing bobbin work. And this is Razzle Dazzle by Ricky Timms. It's a superior thread. Um, so it's a significantly thicker thread. It's designed for bobbin work, couching, and surging, uh, or on a serger. So it's a nice thick thread, but as you can see, it's multi-stranded. And it's got like some metallic pieces in there. This would be a nightmare through your needle, and it just basically just wouldn't work. This is specifically designed to be wound on the bobbin. Some machines, you have to wind it by hand, but we're able to do it just um, like we wound any, wind any other uh, bobbin on the Brina machines because we're dealing with a much bigger bobbin. One thing you do want to do is you want to slow down the machine when you're winding a bobbin. So if you engage the bobbin winder, the screen will come up looking like this. You're gonna to wanna to slow that down drastically well before you ever start winding the bobbin. So I like to engage the bobbin winder, reduce the speed, turn it off, and then or disengage it and then put my bobbin on and wind my razzle dazzle thread on the bobbin so I can wind it nice and slowly it makes all the difference in the world now if you are on a machine that you can't control the speed of the bobbin winder for instance like the 475 you can't control its bobbin winding speed so in that case you do need to wind it by hand and you just kind of wrap it around inside the bobbin case or inside the bobbin and that's the beauty of these big giant bump jumbo bobbins is you can fit a decent amount of this much thicker thread on the bobbin itself opposed to a smaller regular uh, small little plastic or like a little metal bobbin where you just can't fit that much thread on there so you have to have a lot of them wound or you're constantly winding bobbins so but what this technique is it's really neat so the way it works so here's here was a little binder or a little cover we made for a little marble notebook in a class i did a couple of, uh, well before the pandemic so a couple of years ago i taught a class work with the bobbin work so much fun so what we do is we work with we can really work with any type of fabric i like working with something a little bit thicker especially for samples but as you see that fabric that was on the marble notebook cover was just regular cotton quilting weight fabric but here i have like a linen cotton blend but with any of the projects you're working with you need to add some type of stabilizer for simplicity purposes i like working with the shape flex by pellon uh, we use it for all kind of stuff i use it in the collars for my shirts my mom uses uses it for bags um, we used it in previous videos, working on um, using some decorative stitches and doing quilt labels in, on the sewing machine. So it's just wonderful. So with uh, some steam in the iron, it fuses beautiful and it's a fusible woven. So it's basically like a, co a cotton fabric that's fusible and it fuses beautif beautifully to the back of the fabric. So what we do when we're working with bobbin work is we sew from the back. So typically, when we're sewing, we have the right side of our fabric facing up, and that's the stitch we're gonna see. However, with bobbin work, we are actually stitching from the back. 
So the right side of the fabric is against our feed dogs because our bobbin is what we're going to see. Our top thread is what we don't want to see. So what I do whenever I'm working with bobbin, uh, doing bobbin work, is I always draw my lines on the wrong side of my fabric. Typically it's on my stabilizer because I typically have it fused. And so I have a reference point, so I have something to follow. Uh, otherwise you're just kind of stitching in the bl stitching blindedly because you're stitching from the back. And what it's doing is it's stitching and it's just placing the uh, this thicker Ricky Tim's bot, Ricky Tim uh, da razzle dazzle thread on the back and creating those beautiful stitches. And I know it's hard to see, but they're nice and raised, and it's just such a cool, such a cool technique. Um, but so we have to make sure we have some type of interface and some type of stabilizer on the back of our fabric. And I like, like I said, I like to have something drawn. And also, I typically like to have some designs tested out um, that I know will work. So this is where a nine millimeter machine tr really, really shines because you're able to get really big stitches. Um, with bobbin work, tiny detailed stitches do not work. They're just too detailed, the thread is too thick, and as it stitches, it just, it, you just don't really see anything uh, coming from those stitches. So I like to scroll through my um, decorative stitches and see what stitches are nice and big, kind of open. Also, you do not want any triple stitches. Those can really kind of wreak havoc because they're so thick already and they're going over three times and having uh, this in one place three times just isn't the greatest. Um, some triple stitches that have just where they kind of slightly stitch back on, on the where it just stitched uh, to get to another point, that's okay typically, but it's best to just always test out, always try your stitches before you go and put it on your final product. So uh, to reiterate, we've got stabilizer, we've got markings, we've got our fabric, we have our bobbin work thread wound on our bobbin. We're using the red bobbin case. And so for some other Bernina machines, like some of our older Bernina machines, we have different bobbin cases that are designed for bobbin work. Uh, some of them have like a black latch. Um, I think there's two of them that have a black, black latches um, for your older style machines. Um, so there are different bobbin cases for bobbin work and that goes for any brand. So we're gonna put it in just like normal, feed it through here just like normal, except we're typically putting it under a low tension piece but here we're just wrapping around and bringing it through here. So as you can see, there's really no tension being applied to the thread. And that will just go in the machine naturally. There's something else that's very important is just like with metallic thread, we never want to use our thread cutter, like our automatic thread cutter. So here we're dealing with some really thick thread and it does have some metallic strands ran through it. Um, metallic thread and extremely thick thread dulls that thread cutter, that automatic thread cutter significantly quicker and you want to avoid that. So avoid using your automatic thread cutter. So you just want to kind of pull the thread out and wrap it around the side. And then you can always bury it with a self-threading needle and trim up the threads. So another tip and something else that's very important is you want to match your top thread to your bottom or bobbin thread as closely as possible. So here I'm using a black and gold Ricky Tim razzle dazzle thread and I am using black thread in my on the top. One thing I do want to say is I don't get paid at all or any endorsements for the Ricky Tim's Razzle Dazzle thread, even though I mentioned it a thousand times. It's just because that's just one of the best threads to use. It's just excellent. It works. I've tried a handful of different threads for the bobbin, but this one just truly works the best. And it comes in many different colors. But I just want to let you know that I'm, I'm not getting paid for advertising this. Um, but something, uh, so like here, I'm dealing with a silver thread, which will work with this one as well. So you could either use a silver or a gray, or you can use white thread. So the purpose of matching your top thread to what you're using your bobbin is if it does show up, actually, I take, let me take this back. It will show up on the back. Your top thread will show because what it's doing, if you notice, our bobbin thread isn't being pulled up. But to create a stitch, it kind of it has to loop, and so at every little needle penetration along these stitches is our top thread. But because it's black, you can't see it. So if I used white thread or pink thread or lime green thread, you would see that everywhere that needle penetrated on the on the front. 
um, and you don't want to see that. You want to completely avoid seeing that. So you want to match your top thread as best as you can to what you have in the bobbin. Um, the next thing that's very important is you need to make sure you increase your top thread tension. So when I first started, when I was designing the class and we first started teaching it, we would always forget, meaning me, I would always forget to increase my tension every time I changed a stitch. So with the computer screen, with the computerized machines, which almost every machine is nowadays, um, when you go and select a stitch, it automatically changes the tension. It has its own preset tension for that particular stitch. So when I go and change it, it kind of defaults to its the new tension for that stitch. And with temporary ultra stitch memory is it doesn't save it even if you change it to a different stitch. So basically what I've done is something I've passed up and really don't go over with um, in different classes and t telling everyone is in the settings, so go to our settings and stitches, is this icon right here. I always kind of just bypass it because you really don't really have to worry about this. But what this is, is we can change and adjust our default top thread tension. And that's what we're going to do. So we'll go to your settings, go to your sewing settings and come here. And what this does is it allows us to increase or decrease the default tension for every single stitch. So what we want is we want a higher or a tighter tension on our top thread because what that's going to do is going to help pull this bobbin thread up against our fabric. It's too thick to really be pulled up to the back side of our fabric, which is what's facing up, um, but we want to pull it to the our fabric and lay it flat up against there so these corners are nice and crisp so we don't see any top thread looping or eyelashing on the bottom. So if we naturally increase the tension, the most we can do that is by two, which typically works out nicely. But by doing that is it just makes it convenient. So when I go to say a different stitch, if you notice it's yellow, every time I change a different stitch, it's yellow. And that's because the natural tension for this stitch is 3.75, but there's an extra two, 0.0 whatever the unit actually is, uh, 2.0 added to that 3.75. So it's really 5.75 tension. But instead of you having to change the tension, every time you change a new stitch, it will automatically do it for you. This is something that's very, very helpful. So when I go to my stitch, so we're going to try stitch 616. I already kind of selected some stitches. So 616. So it's this neat little stitch. It automatically, shown here, so that tension is 2.75, but it added some more tension to it. So we can go and stitch that out. There's something else that's also important. There's so many things. Um, is the right foot. So you want to make sure you are using a foot, number 20C is perfect, that the center of the foot is elevated. So you can see here how the center of the foot is higher than the sides. And what that does is when we're dealing with these really thick stitches that are being created with this thick thread, having that raised is that foot glides, or the fabric glides smoothly underneath the foot without increasing any um, tension or pressure, I should say, pressure against the foot in the fabric. So that's something that's very important. So let's easily get started. So we've got our tension increase, we've got a razzle-dazzle thread in the bobbin, we've got black thread on the top, and ready to go. So what we're gonna do, and what, what I use these lines for, is I use them to help me keep nice, everything nice and straight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start stitching. So we can see here that this stitch does have a little bit of triple stitching, just so it can get from point A to point B to point C. But for the most part, there isn't much triple stitching at all. Something else that's also helpful is you find a stitch that you really like, but seems to be a little small, and the stitches are a little close together. Something that really helps with bobbin work because we're dealing with such a thick thread on the bobbin, 
is to lengthen or stretch out um, the pattern. And I've got a video, a recent video, showing how to adjust the size of your pattern, and there's many different ways. So when it comes to bobbin work, you're, you're just going to want to increase that stitch length. You're not going to want to use the pattern elongation. That is one of, the, one of the features that's shown in that particular video. So we'll stop here. And remember, you don't want to automatically cut your thread, so we'll raise up the needle, and we'll raise up the foot, and we'll just pull this out. So you can give this a trim and give this a cut and let's see what we got. One thing that I always, always, always forget is that tail. Make sure you pull that tail up and get it out of the way. Because as you can see here, it looks like a hot mess. That's because it is. And that's because that's that bobbin tail that's all in here. So let me cut it and get it out of the way. So you can really see what the stitches are supposed to look like. No one is perfect. Even I make mistakes all the time. I just don't let people see them. But we can see here how pretty those stitches look and how neat. And how thick they are so they really give some dimension and some texture so let's make sure we pull that bobbin tail out of the way before we start again so let's continue but let's increase the stitch length so right now it's at 15.0 so I've used my bottom knob and make it let's see do 24 Let's see what we've got. So remember, no automatic thread cutters. So look how pretty. So we can see here, this is what it looked like by default. And here's what it looks like stretched out or increase our pattern, I'm, I'm sorry, our stitch length. So it's much more noticeable over here than over here. So this is, you know, we've got that nine millimeter stitch width and we really increase the stitch length of that pattern and you get a really, really neat, cool looking stitch. So let's play with another stitch. So we're gonna do stitch 656. This is a neat one. And we'll do the same thing. And this is how you can practice playing with your stitches. Is I always have got tons of pieces of practice like practice fabric like this, I always write the stitch number I'm working with and typically I'll write default and I'll write the, how I changed it just so I know. So let's see how this turned out. But one thing is, is I selected a new stitch and I didn't even think about changing my tension. And the good thing is I shouldn't have to think about it. It's because I've got it set so it automatically will increase by two. So here's what that stitch looks like. So neat, so cool. And that's the default setting. So that's the default size. So if we go and increase that um, stitch length, so it's at 22.2, I'll increase it to like 35. Just a random number. I'm not strategically selecting any particular size or anything. I'm just randomly selecting a number, something that looks good. And also with these stitches, I find if you stitch at a slower speed, you'll have to go real slow as you can see. But the slower you go, it seems to allow that thick bobbin thread to pull up out of the bobbin case easier. 
and it gives you a prettier look opposed to sewing really, really fast. So let's see what we've got. Yes, look how beautiful, look how cool that is. And you see how e easy it is. So this is a really cool stitch. And this is stitch, what I say it was? 656 on the 770. It should be a similar number on most machines. It's definitely in the 600 folder. So such a neat, such a cool stitch. So let's change it up. So let's change to this silver razzle dazzle. I've got some on a bobbin already. So here I've got this super long tail. So I want to preserve that thread. So I've got it in my bobbin case already. So I can actually just spin this bobbin and get some of it pulled up. So I'll we'll put this in. And one thing we can do, we are going to change our top thread, but we can bring up that we need to bring up that bobbin thread and have it at the top ready to go. And you can either use your needle up, needle down button, or you can turn your hand wheel. So we're going to just change this to white thread. So here we've got white thread and silver razzle dazzle on the bottom. So let's select stitch 698 it looks like. And we're just gonna make it, let me show you. So here is stitch 698. So let's just make it bigger from the get-go because we can see that we like those bigger stitches, those longer stretched out stitches. All right, let's give it a go. Look how pretty. Looks nice and pretty. It's a little, maybe a little hard to see on the camera because it is silver thread on a light color background. That's why I stuck with the black for the, uh, the video sample. But how neat does that look? It, you can really embellish some fun things or do some fun quilt blocks or garments or anything with these fun stitches and this awesome fun thread. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, there is one machine that has a huge advantage, and that is the Bernina 790. The Bernina 790, because it has sideways motion stitches, we can see here how large these stitches are. So if you do have a 790 or a 780 um, that have these nice big sideways motion stitches, you can really do some fun things. So I'll have a separate video at some point uh, working with the 7, 8, 790 and its sideways motion stitches because you can really make some fun big stitches doing uh, the bobbin work with the red bobbin case. Other things you can do is you can create your own stitches. I thought I had some on here. But with the 790 you can create and draw your own stitches so you can make something that's also fun and more unique. And even you can use the circular embroidery attachment to do some fun circles with the, um, the bobbin work, which you can do on any machine. All right, well, that concludes this video, working with bobbin, th um, doing bobbin work or bobbin play um, on the Bernina series, on the Bernina 770. But like I said, this applies to every single Bernina machine that has a nice big bob jumbo bobbin. 
and you just need the red bobbin case. The red bobbin case is a must, um, otherwise you'd have to deconstruct your black bobbin case, and then the odds you can get your tension back to where it was are slim, um, and it's just not worth the headache. The red bobbin case is wonderful, you just pop the bobbin in, and you're good to go. And remember the different steps and the different things we did. One of the biggest being the number 20 C foot and increasing your top thread tension to get these stitches to lay nice and flat up against your fabric. All right, stay tuned for some more fun uh, videos working with different feet, accessories, techniques um, on the breeding machines and with some other fun gadgets. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy sewing.